Hi everybody, this is Rita Holmes, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And I'm here to bring you a technique video tonight. I want to make sure I have my iPad turned down, though. We don't want all that noise. I just want to make sure that you're going to be in the view, in the viewing area when I go to do my stamping. But anyway, I'd like to welcome you here and uh, just tell you I'm glad that you come and visit my um, YouTube page, and um, if you have any friends that like stamping, I would like for you to invite them too. That would be very nice. Um, I do want to tell you, though, I do have an online store at RitaHolmes.StampinUp.net, and um, there you can find all of the stuff in the in the catalogs that we have that are current, plus the clearance rack and um, different things like that, and place your order if you do that. I would like for you to use the December host code, which is FWUNS22U. Um, if you don't know, I do have a Facebook group called Stamp Crazy VIP, which is the same name as my YouTube channel. That I do videos every Tuesday morning, and um, after I do the video, I always upload a PDF of the technique I did, which shows the list of supplies and the directions and a picture of the card. So um, you are more than welcome to go over there anytime. Steal any of the P, you're not really stealing them, but take any of the PDFs that are there and um, use them in your stamping. So um, now my earlier PDFs do not have pictures with them. I need to go back and do that. I have not done it. Um, maybe that could be a winter project for me when I'm not out running so much. And hopefully life someday will calm down because I am a runner. So um, anyway, we are going to do faux stamping with stamps. Um, how I came across this, it wasn't a Stampin' Up! person that did it that I saw. I went and I looked up watercoloring and it's... Um, Faux watercoloring with stamps is what it is. I'm sorry if I said that wrong the first time. But anyway, um, and I looked at a lot of different ideas with it, and I came across the idea that this lady did with stamps, and I'm sorry I can't remember her name. Um, but anyway, um, there is somebody out there. If you look up faux um, watercoloring, she will come up, I'm sure. She did a lot with trees, which I think trees look really nice. I did try to do a conglomerate of stamps on here to match this die cut, and um, I kind of like it. It's different. So I did these cards, and I want to tell you a little bit about um, what I used in the cards. We're going to be doing this card right here. So I'm going to take these two cards, and I'm going to put them away. Um, what I did use on these cards, I will tell you the stamp sets I used in case you are interested. This one is artistically inked with the inked dies to go with it. And this one I did the Welcoming Woods, which is going to be in the catalog that ends December 30th. So um, I did those two stamp sets, okay? And I did the Happy Birthday is then this that I used there, and the Happy Birthday is on this so I used just one complete set for each of those. Now what I did use on this set, I used the Campology because I absolutely love the trees in the Campology. I think those are really neat looking trees. But I didn't want any of those sayings, so I took the Happy Birthday out of the Sweet Ice Cream because I really like the font of that. And I used those two sets to do this card. Now I did this card, the paper right here, which will end up being five and a quarter by four, is the shimmery white. And if you see it, it kind of shimmers. I use that because it's easy to watercolor on. It's a little bit heavier and um, it just holds the watercolor real well. Now on the inside of the card, I didn't, um, white looked really stark next to this. So I used the very vanilla and I stamped the trees on the inside just to bring my outside of my card to the inside. And then you can sign, put another um, sentiment in here if you like, whatever. Um, I usually leave that blank and then just stamp or put some, some kind of design in here to kind of go with the front of my card. 
So I will tell you the measurements as I go, but you are welcome to go get that PDF. Um, if you need any of my information, you can um, do a screenshot of this or write it down. Um, but it uh, gives you all of my information about where you can find me as far as email, my Facebook group, my online store, my host code. It's kind of my life in general right here. So I'm gonna move that off to the side a little bit so it'll be out of my way. And what we are going to use today, and I'll go ahead and tell you, we're gonna use a piece of five and a half by eight and a half evening evergreen. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in half since I showed it to you. I'm going to be using a piece of five and three eighths by four and an eighth of soft suede, which will go on the front of my card. Barely. I might trim the side of that down just a pair. Then what I'm gonna use is my shimmery white. Right now it's kept five and a half by four and a quarter because I'm gonna tape this down and then I'll have room to cut it off and make it the size I want. And then my inside of my very vanilla is five and a quarter by four and I'll be stamping the trees right on here. So I'm gonna move the pieces out of the way that I'm not gonna need. I will be using my Stamparatus you don't have to use a Stamparatus or any kind of stamping tool like that. If you don't want to, um, I just find it easier to have it in place. I am going to take my piece of five and a half by four and a quarter shimmery white, and I'm going to lay it on a piece of, this is like a thick or a thin um, chipboard, but you can use cardboard or the chipboard, anything that's going to lay flat and be sturdy. And what I want to do with that, you can use painter's tape, or I have some of this crafting tape that I bought off of Amazon. And I'm going to barely tape the edges down. And what I learned on the lady that did this, and I didn't know, and I think it would work for all um, water, water coloring, is if you tape this down, as you are working on it, and I'm barely gonna just get the edges in there, tape it down on all four sides. It keeps your paper from warping so bad from the water. So therefore you won't get that, you know, little wavy look so much into your paper. And I like that idea. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna take my other four edges. And like I said, I'm just barely putting my edges down because it's mainly just to hold that in place. We're just holding that in place enough to stamp it. I'm gonna tear these little ends off just because I don't want them in my way. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Stamparatus, I'm gonna turn it around this way. I will take a stamp set, and if you use one of these and you don't know this little trick, it holds your plate um, back for you a little, um, holds it kind of even, so it's not tilted. If you're gonna ink on it and stuff, it gives you a a little background to do that. So let me move it up a little bit. So there you go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this in the corner. And this will hold it down. So um, your magnets will. I'm gonna get the stamp out from the Campology set. And I'm going to lay this where I want it, and I kind of want it in a little bit, and I want it a little high so that I have room to stamp my happy birthday. Plus, I'm going to be cutting a little bit off of my card, so we want that about right there. So I'm going to bring this in. 
I had a friend that just sent me a tool her husband made. Isn't the wood really pretty in this? But he made these. It's like a um, one of those felt pads that goes on furniture on the bottom of it. And he made it as a tool for your stamparatus. And that way you just rub and you get your... And then you don't have to press. I really like that. So she just sent it to me as a gift. I got it oh, last week, I guess. Yeah, sometime last week. And um, so I started using it, and I really, really, really love it. So I just wanted to tell you that. So the other stuff that I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using some water, and I just have it in a little container here that I hope I don't spill because I'm so clumsy. I'm going to be using a paintbrush. You could use a water brush, but a water brush takes longer to get your paper really saturated. So I really liked, I dug this out of my craft stuff that I have. And then I'm going to use a spritzer with water in it. And I'll show you why we're using the two different things. Let me bring this in just a little bit so you can see the stamp. And I think you can still see all of this. Yeah, as long as you can see the paper and the stamp, we're good. So these are the tools that I'm going to be using right now. And the inks I'm going to be using for the trees, I'm going to do three different colors and three different layers. Our first layer is going to be soft sea foam. Our second layer will be soft succulent. And our third layer will be evening evergreen. Okay? So we're just going to lay these here. I'm going to move my other cards out of my way. I don't want to get any water on them. So we're going to bring in the soft sea foam. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up my tree. Okay? Or trees, I should say. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I'm going to kind of look at where I, to know kind of where I want my water to be, how high and stuff, so that I can start putting water on my paper. And I, what I'm going to do is I want to do this, and I'll kind of look at it from the side, and I want it to look like it kind of glistens, so I know that the water is standing on top of my paper. And that's another reason why putting it down is so good. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take my spritzer, find a little hole to it, and I'm going to spritz my ink on my trees. And I'm going to just lay that down, take my tool, and just rub that. And it's going to look like a complete mess when I do this, because you're not even going to see the trees. The reason why I use this light color, and I'm just going to dab in the area of where those trees were. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and what I do with my paper towel, here it is. I can take that water off of that right there, and I can ink that again if I want some more of that lighter color. And I'm going to go ahead and just spritz a little bit on there, and I'm going to come back down. That gave me some more of that color. And I'm just going to pounce it and soften my edges of where my trees were. Okay? And I just want that to come out just a little bit. And you probably can't see that on the camera so well because it's such a light color. I'm going to wipe off my excess water right now off of here and just leave that on there. I don't have to worry about getting all the color off, but I do want to get some of that um, water off because I don't want my ink. I'm done with that color of ink. We're going to set it to the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my soft succulent. I'm going to ink my stamp up with that. I think I just got my finger in my ink. I'm very noted on doing that. And what I want to do first is I want to kind of dry this paper 
so that that color that I put on there stays on there pretty much. And it doesn't take much to dry it. If you are a new stamper or you just have never had a heat gun, for this technique, you can use a hair dryer. Now you can't use a hair dryer to emboss, it doesn't get hot enough. But to do this, it's okay to use a hair dryer. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take and spritz my trees. And I'm gonna spritz just a little bit of water in where I We're gonna bring that down. I'm gonna rub. Bring that back up. And now what I'm going to do, cause see how that's running? And we want that to run, except for I don't want it to run all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna hold it up a minute. What I'm gonna do is that water that's running, I am going to just let that kind of run down a little bit. And I, here again, I'm gonna soften these edges a little bit. Just a little. I can wipe my brush off and just kind of soften that. Okay, now with that, I am going to dry that. You just kind of water that and get it the way you look. You don't want your second coat to have as much water. Kind of looks like a glob of some kind of horror movie, doesn't it? See how that discolored the paper around there? Which is great, we don't mind that at all. Now I'm going to try to get all the water off of that. Pretty much, I'm not gonna move my stamp though because I got it where I want it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this ink pad up because I will invariably pick up the wrong one. I'm gonna use my Evening Evergreen and I'm going to just ink that up. And I want to ink it pretty good. I'd like to get a nice, good covering on here. If not, I can always ink again. So I'm going to put that down, and I'm going to rub. Let's see what that looks like. Looks pretty. I might go over it just one more time really lightly though. Just so I can have a good dark image of my trees. There we go, and look how pretty that is. Whoops, see, I'm gonna knock over my water, guys. Looks a lot prettier in person than it does in that video right there. But anyway, what I want to do now is I'm going to take my block and I'm going to put some Evening Evergreen ink on it. Just going to put a little bit there on my block because now we can do some enhancing on our stamp. So I can pick that up, kind of dab that in there. I don't want it quite that wet. And then maybe around down here on my tree line, I can just like just add some of that in. I can maybe um, go and add some darkness in here you can just tap with your brush and add some dark and just 
just add some color in there in my trees. Okay, and after that is done, I'm gonna clean my brush out. I'm gonna take and clean my ink off of my block because I'm gonna use that to stamp my happy birthday. So let's put that on my block. And what I'm gonna do real quick before I quit, I am going to clean my stamp a little bit. So I'm just gonna use it with this misty water because I am going to have to move my stamp probably to stamp my inside of my trees. Look at all the ink. Looks like we waste a lot of ink, doesn't it, when you're doing this? And so I got that dry when I get ready to use that again. I'm going to bring in soft suede and do my happy birthday. So let's ink that up really well. And I just put that on a block. I didn't worry about doing it on my um, stamparatus. And I'm going to do it off to the side a little bit. And then I'm just going to hold that down. Let that ink soak into that paper. And bring it up. And there we have... The card is made all except for one little thing. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it down here while I do this other thing. I am going to be using, and here it is, a quickie glue pen. Now Stampin' Up! does not sell this. I ordered mine through Amazon. Um, but anyway, it is just a real, it works just like an ink pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take one here and I'm just gonna do some dots. And you can't see it, but there is glue going all over this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take glitter, which we don't sell the glitter anymore either, but I love my glitter on things so I keep it around and I'm just going to ink or ink put this glitter on top of my card and I keep this in a bowl so that I can just dump it right back into the bowl let me get this out of the way real quick don't want to dump it on my floor. That would be a no. And I don't know if... It's hard to tell with the shimmery paper, which is shimmery and which is glitter on that part. But I don't know. Can you see how that just shimmers? I'm trying to look to see if I see it in my video. Can't hardly see it real well. See if I hold it up. This one, that's really dry. Let's see. This one, I didn't put as much on it, but it shows that once this dries, it'll be really, really glittery. And um, I'm going to put that to the side for a minute because I wanna bring this in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to where I'm gonna want my trees right here. And that's why I cleaned that real quick. And I've got a piece of scrap paper so that I don't get my stamparatus all nasty. Just going to add that there. I'm going to ink that up in Evening Evergreen again, my stamp. And of course the stamp is out of the view because it's so far down on my stamp apparatus, but you'll see when I bring it down, I'm just going to, this is so much easier to use this tool than my fingers. Oh, see if I can get the tops of that tree without it re-inking it. Yeah, there we go. 
And there's the inside of my card. So now let's take everything apart and um, I'll clean the rest of that off after we're done. Stick this in here so it doesn't make a mess. There we go. That'll work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off of the... And I just use this piece of... Um, I actually, this is a backing that came in one of our paper packs, or 12 by 12s because I saved those, thinking I'm going to use them for something. And this was that something. Oh, that peeled my card away right there. It must have got a little wet. That's why you make it bigger, and that way you can cut it down. Okay, now... I'm going to, whoop, I'm going to shut this is what I'm going to do. Almost forgot. I'm going to bring my paper trimmer in. So let me move some of this. Let me move the water, especially. A while ago, I dumped it and went under my computer. That wasn't good. I'm like, oh, I got to be careful. But I'm like a bull in the china closet sometimes. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit. I don't know if I got this the right measurements. It looked a little. Yep, it does say that that is right, but I'm going to move it back just a hair and trim that off on one side. Okay. I hate when you trim just a tiny edge off. Sit that on both ends. Let me see how it fits this card now. If it fits it a little better. Still going to come off of that little edge. I don't know what that is about, but we're going to do it anyway. There we go. Let's see now. Sometimes things just don't fit the way you want them to. That one's good. So now what I'm going to bring this in, and I'm going to make this a five and a quarter. Move that up a little bit. Take that off. by four, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a hair off of each edge. Well, wrong foot, whoops, wrong blade. And let's take just a tiny bit off of this one. have to cut it down just a little bit more since I cut that paper down. I am going to, so I think I'm going to take it off right here just because I don't know if I take, why did I do the wrong blade? What's that all about? Take off just a little bit up here. Now, let's see. Since I'm set and move that around, I just want to make sure I got some even edges to where everything will look okay. I usually measure everything, but nah, I still want to use that blade down there. There we go. Now we're done. Just did an extra little trimming on that card. Sometimes you have to do that. Get everything out of the way. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and I'm gonna use my glue. 
and I'm going to go all over the back of this really good because even though it did not warp too much now that it's dry it lays pretty flat I still want this to be glued really good through the center here where we've watercolored so I just wanted to add some And let's, I have room to move a little bit on this, which is good. Lay it down and I found this tool works really good for this too. Especially when you got arthritis in your hands, this works great. And that laid that down really well. I'm going to take and glue the inside in while I have my glue out. gonna be all glittery. So I have all glitter on all my cards. So there we go. I'm going to make sure that's burnished. We can put this back on our glue. We're not gonna be using the glue. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the black dimensionals and I'm gonna to add to the back here so that this just gives it a little bit of dimension. And what I'm going to do is take my scissors and just cut a piece to go in my center. There we go. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on the front. And then we're going to call it a day, girls. We're going to be done. Or guys. We could have some guys watching this. I know some guys that stand. So there we go. I'm going to just kind of rub where those... Where I know my glue dots are. Or my... Not glue dots, but my dimensionals. And have that down. And there is our card. So that's very easy watercoloring to do. Here is the one I had done. And then here's the other two samples, which is, um, let's put them up here and here. I think you can see them this way. That is the cards that I did with the watercolors. I hope you guys give it a try and try all different kinds of stamps, but, um, if you know, I like I like trees. I like outdoorsy stuff. So these, and I like these for uh, masculine birthday cards too. But this one you could take and really glitter up, and you could do this as a Christmas card even. So um, that would be really really good. So anyway, that is my video. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you come back again. Um, I am not very. I don't consistently do this as per day of the week. So if you hit the subscribe button and get notifications, you'll get notified when I do have a video on, so you'll be able to see it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will be back with you soon, I hope. Have a great day or night, whatever time it is you're watching this. Goodbye.